One of the major alert signs of the covert narcissist is their false humbleness. This is something that I mentioned in a recent video and I wanted to follow up on this because it's such a big topic. This can be one of the most missed warning signs. Why? Because it looks humble and humble is good, right? But the thing is that it's fake. Their humbleness is fake just like their sweetness is fake. When a covert narcissist is acting humble, it's all for show. In this video, I want to help you see through it so you can recognize this. I'm going to give you five reasons why they use the false humbleness. And then at the end, I'm going to compare the covert and the overt narcissist in this way. As you know, narcissists and other manipulators are often cheating and juggling partners. That's why it's a good idea to get yourself checked regularly because you never know what they could bring home. That's why I partnered with Let's Get Checked. They provide accredited lab tests that are sent directly to your door in discreet packaging via next day delivery. The awesome thing is you don't even have to go to a physician's office. You get it right to your door. You collect your own sample with the step-by-step -step instructions. You put it back in the package with the prepaid shipping label and you send it off within two to five days. You get your confidential results online. Let's Get Checked has a dedicated group of physicians and nurses who are available 24 seven to answer any questions that you might have about your results, to offer any treatment options as needed. Let's Get Checked is available in over 20 countries. You can find out if your country is on the list and you can also get 20% off when you use the link in the video description below. So why do covert narcissists use false humbleness, fake humility? I want to give you five reasons. Number one, it's a cover for their arrogance and entitlement. So the overt narcissist is very openly and transparently arrogant and entitled. That's the reason why sometimes it's so hard to recognize the covert type because they do such a good job of hiding that. Now I'm going to do a future video just on the narcissist entitlement. And I also have a video of when the narcissist plays victim, why they do that. They'll often combine playing a victim with this false humbleness. And so in that video, which I'm going to link up here in the corner for you, this person was like, it's all about the victims. And the most important thing is the victims and helping the victims while she was entitling herself to steal the name of my business to use for her group. So these are the kind of things that they'll do. They'll use those combos, but essentially they're hiding their arrogance and their entitlement. You'll also notice this with people who have a martyr complex. I just, I just do so much for other people and no one recognizes it and no one thanks me. It's just, it's such a thankless job. That's false humility. It's, it's like a combination of telling you about all these great things that they're doing and how good of a person they are while at the same time acting really humble about it. But the funny thing is, when a person is actually humble, they don't talk about themselves in that way. When a person is faking humble, they have to tell you all this story, all this cover about them and how great they are and how much they do, but, but they don't need any recognition. But you know, it's really just, it's just, it's all for other people. It's not for them. Number two, they use their false humility to harvest the energy and emotions of others. Now, I just recently did a video on that topic of harvesting your energy and emotions. I'm going to link that up here in the corner for you. They might want to be harvesting your positive emotions, your admiration, your praise, your love, the awards that you're going to give them, or your negative emotions, your fear, panic, outrage, anger. All of that, why they're doing that is to get narcissistic supply. That's the bottom line. They need to get that supply from you, whether positive or negative. That's going to come in the form of your energy, of your emotions. It could be your physical, tangible resources as well. But this is a tactic that they will use to extract your emotions and your energy. Number three, they'll act humble as part of their PR campaign. 
Now, I recently did a whole video just on that topic. I'll put the link up here in the corner for you if you haven't seen it. The PR campaign is where they're trying to sell you this image of how they're such a good person, they're such a humanitarian, they're so selfless, they're so perfect in some way. Their PR campaign sometimes will look like they're just so concerned. They're so concerned for you, they wanna take care of you and help you, or their parents, or their child. Oh, everything is about the child, it's all about my son, my son is everything or they're the kind of person that pretends to be the philanthropist and the humanitarian, so it's all about the poor or whatever group that they've chosen to focus on. Image is everything. So that PR campaign, why they're using this with false humility, it often corresponds with what we call the humble brag, which is where someone is actually bragging about themselves and all the things that they've done or do, while at the same time acting humble. The perfect example of the humble brag is Jenna's character in 30 Rock. If you've seen that old NBC show 30 Rock, Jenna's character, pretty much every episode, she's going to drop at least one, if not more than one of these. It's such a great example of this. Number four, they use the false humility for triangulation. That triangulation could be them comparing themselves to you indirectly or them comparing you to other people or comparing themselves to other people in some way to either make you or the other person look bad and them look good in a very fake way or also to kind of like get you to work to earn their approval, to get you to prove yourself in some way. Like So they might even be writing in the script of this some kind of false accusation, but it's plausible deniability, it's indirect, it's not very direct to you, but you're thinking, what? And this happened to me a little over a year and a half ago, I met another expert in this field, and she started talking about how, you know, she's not doing it for the fame, and it's not about the fame at all, and I'm not interested in being famous, at least, at least not me. I'm not interested in being famous. And so it was, it was like she was trying to get me to feel like maybe I was. And so then she told this whole story and did this whole dramatic thing. And then we met the next day with another person, several other people, and she did the same thing again. It's, it's not about the fame and I'm not interested in being famous. When someone is doing that sort of thing, they're either trying to make you feel like you have to prove that you're not either and that's a trap, by the way. Or they're just trying to make themselves look good in that triangulation in comparison to other people who may or may not even be concerned with that. And number five, they use the false humility to gain power and control over others. They're controlling your perception of them because you think that they're humble, you think that they're harmless. They could be controlling your reaction. They could be controlling the whole narrative of some kind of situation by injecting their false humbleness, like when they get caught or somebody figures out that someone did something but we don't know who it is yet. And so they'll put on the false humbleness so that you think, well, that's gotta be the last person that would have done such a thing. This is super common among the spiritual psychopaths or religious psychopaths. Now, they are neither spiritual nor religious, but they will use the dogma, they will use the beliefs, they will use the words, they will use the practices to create a smoke screen around them to make them look like a very humble religious person or a very humble spiritual person, when really they're just using that to manipulate other people. They'll use their false humility to look innocent to almost it's almost like playing dead right because you look harmless in that way it's self-effacing self-minimizing you'll hear this from people who are like i'm not interested in money and i don't need any money and people who charge money for what they do are wrong and they're evil and they shouldn't be doing that and it's all about the money Really, that's just showing their own jealousy, their projections, and probably their own lack of money, which they wish they had. So they have to make other people feel bad for earning money in general or for earning money doing something that they love versus working some soul-sucking job, which they're stuck in. I found a quote that I thought was pretty spot on. It says, humility is often a false front 
we employ to gain power over others. That's why someone named François de la Rochefoucauld, it's a tough last name, but that sentence is so true. This is why the covert narcissist uses the false humbleness. The bottom line is to gain power and control. They'll use it for those other tactics that I mentioned, but really at the core of all of those is getting power and control over other people, over their perception, over their image. So the covert narcissist is like a walking machine of fakeness. Everything they do is fake. Their fake sweetness, their fake generosity, their fake kindness, their fake humility. Why are they so fake? Because they're so deeply insecure. That's why they put on that whole facade. Now the overt type is a very different story. At the end of the day, it's the same thing. It's just taking a different face. The overt type is shameless. They're not ashamed of being overtly arrogant, overtly entitled, not humble at all. They openly display that pride and arrogance. So the covert type, that false humility, it's a sign of hidden arrogance. It's a sign of insecurity. And it's a way of covering up their self-centeredness. But again, if you really pay attention, and you're always gonna notice this at the beginning because this is one of those really early warning signs of the covert narcissist. All that humbleness that they profess to have, it's all about them. Listen to the stories they're telling. Listen to the words they're saying. It's all about showing what a good person they are, showing how they're so innocent, showing how they do so much for other people, showing how perfect or humanitarian they are. So that's a red flag that you're gonna notice if you're dating, if you're meeting new people, if you're looking for new friends. And it's definitely a helpful parameter to use when you're evaluating someone who's already in your life, maybe a long-term friend, maybe a family member, a coworker. They've been around a long time, so it's not like the early warning signs. You already missed all that, right? But maybe you can look back and analyze, actually, yeah, they've always been doing that since the very beginning. Or maybe you don't remember a lot of the earlier things that happen, but then you know you go to a family reunion, you go to some social gathering, or nowadays maybe it's all online, and then you notice these signs. And it's not a one-off thing, okay? Because everyone can make a mistake or say something that can sound kind of funny once, but it's a pattern. When you notice that this is a pattern, that they're always leaning on the false humbleness, that's your warning sign of a covert narcissist. So I hope this video was helpful for you. If it was, give it a like or let me know in the comments below if there's something you wanna share, the false humbleness that you noticed in a covert type, how that showed up for you in your situation, I would love for you to write that in the comments below because that gives other people insights and ideas as they're evaluating other people in their life Maybe they just hadn't thought, oh wow, it could show up that way. So that would be really helpful for other people. I would love to read those. I'm sending you all a big hug.